Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Phil Calvert, and a very warm welcome. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I imagine everyone's working hard at home. Um, just got a couple of people asking questions straight away. Let's just quickly see what's happening. Good, good, good. Okay, everything's absolutely fine. So, as I said, my name is Phil Calvert. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we're going to go at a fairly brisk pace. Um, I haven't timed this uh, to the minute, but we should be doing 60 to 90 minutes, uh, something like that. Feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm trying to operate this on my own, so I can't guarantee that I can get to your question, but I've anticipated most of the questions that usually get asked. If I don't answer your question, uh, please do send me an email and uh, I'll be happy to get back to you personally. Um, my dog, I'm not, I'm not planning for my dog to take uh, a role in today's presentation, but it's entirely possible that, uh, that she will, so I hope we'll enjoy that moment when she comes. Uh, those of you that have to jump off at any particular time, um, we are recording this, so we'll make sure that you get a, a copy um, at some particular point. So I hope you're sitting comfortably uh, and at a suitable uh, distance from each other, and uh, let's crack on, if we can get anything to work here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of background uh, about me, just very, very briefly. Um, 20 years in sales and marketing, very much in the corporate world, um, arranging and speaking at seminars. Uh, then when I was made redundant, um, since then I've been speaking and training in my own right for about 20 years. Um, a bit of background, a few fascinating facts. I created the world's first social network in financial services, and I'll explain why that's relevant as we go. Um, I've written 20 books. Um, I used to be a rock concert photographer. There's a couple of my pictures, one of uh, ZZ Top, one of Judas Priest, both still going strong. And I officially uh, held, the world, held the record for making the world's best gin and tonic. I did that quite a few years ago. I entered a cocktail making competition. All the top bar men and women from around the world turned up at a hotel in London and I won the world's best gin and tonic. Um, and if anyone wants to know the secret recipe, again, drop me an email and um, I, I might even share it with you. Okay, my, my, my biggest moment in my career has to be this testimonial from uh, the great Nigel Risner. I don't think Nigel's on this call today, uh, but <laughs> this is one of my favorites. And I absolutely love it. And I've used this one on, on LinkedIn quite a bit and it gets a little bit of a smile now and again. Um, and I'll explain why that's important as well as we go. Um, how did I get into LinkedIn? Well, I mentioned that, you know, 20 years ago, uh, I was made redundant and I decided to start my own business. And um, I realized I got to get out and do some networking pretty quickly. Um, and um, I recently joined the PSA. Um, and my local PSA was actually in Leatherhead in Surrey. Uh, it isn't there anymore. But it was run by this gentleman on the, re on the left, Reg Athwell, who I, I know one or two of you will actually know. So Reg used to run PSA in Leatherhead. And this particular meeting, um, I went very much at the last minute. I had no idea who the speaker was or what it was about. But we had all the usual networking at the beginning. And then the time came for the, the, whoever was doing the main presentation. And I sat down next to this lady here, Tessa Hood. And again, I know some of you will, will know Tessa. And I said to Tessa, um, so who's, who's the speaker tonight? Um, and she said, oh, it's a guy called Andrew, Andrew Widgery from a website called Academy. Now, I'd never heard of Andrew and I'd never heard of Academy before. But then Tessa finished the sentence by saying, uh, it's a website where you can create a profile. You should join. You'll get business. And for the next hour, Andrew talked about Academy and he talked about a new concept called online social networking. And I have to say my, my jaw dropped. I mean, I'd previously spent 20 years networking in bars mostly in the financial services world. And this idea that you could actually do this online, uh, it just, my jaw dropped. It really got my attention. Um, and I went home and really started thinking about this as to how I could use online social networking, A, to help me attract new clients and business, but how I could actually bring people together. Um, and we'll explain a bit more about that as we go. So if there are any rules today, um, the top rule is uh, open minds, please, um, to try new things. Uh, it's entirely possible that some of the things I'm going to suggest to you today, uh, you said you've tried it in the past, and oh, all that didn't work. But um, I think more than ever, uh, right now, we need to be very open-minded to um, looking at new ways to do things, 
uh, creative ways to do things and try out new things. So I'm going to suggest a few things which I would love you to try and I'd love your feedback on them. Um, I'd like you to be curious and also to create curiosity. Um, creating curiosity is very, very effective on LinkedIn. So we're going to uh, explore some of that. Um, reframing, uh, you know, again, there'll be some of you who'll hear some of the things I'm going to say and say, oh, I don't think that'll work or that's not worked for me in the past. Just take a step back and uh, instead of thinking, no, that won't work or that's not possible right now, to turn it into what are the possibilities with this? What could I do with this information that I'm hearing? Um, ask for feedback, get help from each other. Uh, I think one of the best things about the, the PSA um, is the sort of informal mastermind groups ask each other for fee for feedback on what you're going to hear today and um, I'm going to invite you to trust what I'm going to tell you today uh, trust the process there is a process to this um, a, a lot of people forget that uh, you know like any software that you, you use in your business unless you've been trained how to use it you'll never see the full the full benefits from it and at the end of the day LinkedIn is a piece of software uh, nothing more and when you know how to use it and you know the processes to follow, then the magic starts to happen. So how do speakers typically attract new business right now? Well, in a variety of ways, and, and here are just some of them, referrals um, from other speakers, um, having a great speech. Those of you know are the great Frederick Haran. Um, he's always talking about the importance of having a great speech, which I think, I think it's a given, but I think we, we kind of assume we've got a great speech, but really working hard on it. Podcasting is becoming increasingly important and, and audio, uh, social media. I know there's one or two speakers get their business from social media, uh, from their website. Although I would argue that the vast majority of speakers, myself included, are not converting anything like as many people who visit our websites, um, as we should, we'll touch on that as well. Obviously repeat bookings, that's the best type of business. Having a great story um, is one way to attract business. Books and blogging, having great branding, uh, having a great show reel, and occasionally from bureaus and agents. And there are other ways that we get business, but those tend to be the main ones. But there are a lot of people out there who are telling us that actually this is what we should be doing. Um, we should be using YouTube, we should have a podcast, we should have a better website, we should have a membership site, we should be on, have our own Facebook group, yeah, we should be running online courses, newsletters, be on Twitter, running more events of our own. It goes on, it goes on, and it goes on. Now, I'm all for a little bit of experimentation as part of a marketing strategy, but to me, this is increasingly becoming, in my view, nonsense. It is just noise. Um, and it helps no one. And there are far too many people giving away their intellectual property um, in the hope that, it, it, that, that it's going to stick and people are going to track. Now, again, if your strategy is blogging, that's fine. That one thing is blogging. But this idea that we should be just using all these platforms, is, it is absolute nonsense. Um, it doesn't work. You know, it is no different from just chucking leaflets out there into the air in the hope that someone will pick one up and say, oh, I've been waiting for this. I need to, need to book them. We need to be very, very much more strategic. Um, my personal marketing for my speaking business is almost exclusively on LinkedIn. Um, and I use LinkedIn basically as the top of my funnel. And we're going to uh, talk a little bit more about that as we go. So getting some real focus uh, is, is very, very important. And if I was going to recommend a resource right now, I'd strongly recommend that um, you get this book called The One Thing, which helps you to get real focus on focusing on one thing or one aspect of your business. And this also extends to your marketing and how you promote yourself. It's my belief that the overwhelming majority of, of speakers can get all, and coaches and consultants, can get all the business they will ever want just from using LinkedIn. So time and time again, I get asked, certainly by my clients, Phil, I see uh, Jones down the road, uh, they're using Twitter, perhaps we'll give that a go. And I see somebody else there using their Facebook page, perhaps we'll give that a go. And um, Fred down the road's using uh, YouTube, perhaps we'll give that a go. Um, and guess what? 
give that a go is not a plan. It's not a strategy. If it is a plan, it's not a very good one. So we get far too wrapped up in the technology of marketing. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it is nothing to do with technology. It is everything to do with technique. Um, so we're going to explore a bit more about that. It's everything to do about how do human beings interact and engage and communicate with each other. And if we can get that in our heads, then the magic really starts to happen on LinkedIn. So that day when I met uh, Andrew Widgery from Academy, he was talking about this concept of social networking. And I think in many ways, if we fast forward to today, I think we have sacrificed social networking for this thing called social media. Social media is noise. Um, yeah, you can control that noise to a certain degree. Um, and some would argue that to a, to a certain extent, there's a bit of social networking going on in there. Um, it's really important to remember that LinkedIn is a social networking platform. It's a real time social networking platform. And in recent months, a very recent months, LinkedIn has recognized that far too many of its users are using it as a social media platform, as a broadcast platform. So what the algorithm is seeking to do now is to reward users for networking. Um, so I'm gonna explain a little bit about how we actually do that um, as we go. So a few questions. So to me, some, there are some basics uh, that are right at the core of how we need to and how we can attract more speaking business. One is build your value ladder, and we're going to explore uh, that concept there. And having a great value ladder um, really, really can make your experience of LinkedIn very much more exciting. Get more traffic to your website, and that links very, very closely to um, the value ladder thing. And leveraging and building community. So we're gonna explore all of these as we go. Now, I do a lot of work in financial services um, and I do a lot of training with financial advisors to try and encourage them to look and behave differently. You, know, you go down any high street, you'll find that one firm of accountants looks the same as another, one firm of estate agents looks the same as another, one firm of financial advisors looks the same as another. Um, and some of them say to me, well, that's not very fair, Phil. We are different from Jones & Co. Uh, just down the road. And I know that that is correct. They are different. But on the outside, whether it's a shop front or whether it's a website, they all look the same. None of us as speakers, coaches or consultants are paid to look and behave like another speaker, coach or consultant. The lady on the right is a professional lookalike. Uh, of Audrey Hepburn, in case you haven't guessed. She is paid to look and behave like another brand. And, you know, big corporates hire her to come along to their stand at exhibitions and we can all have a selfie with her and everything's nice. So she's paid to look and behave like another brand. No one on this call is paid to look and behave like another brand. We've got to start differentiating ourselves in a big way. Uh, and again, we're going to be exploring that. Now, at every conference I ever speak at, I ask people to put their hands up if they're on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, everybody puts their hands up. It's as simple as that. It's rare to find an audience where uh, somebody doesn't put their hand up. I then say to them, now put your hands up if you know why you're on LinkedIn. And like three hands go up. We all think we know why we're on LinkedIn, but when I then say to them, and how many of you have got a written down, a formal written down LinkedIn strategy? No hands go up at all. So we kind of think we've got this idea in our head as to what we're actually up to, but we haven't planned it. Everyone else is on there. So, you know, maybe you were looking for a job at one point. So you were using the site to try and attract something. The magic starts to happen on LinkedIn when you plan what you're trying to do. Um, it's a bit like if you want to put on a seminar or a workshop, when you plan it, when you put down some objectives, then you start finding that people turn up, you get bums on seats, and the thing goes well. And it's exactly the same on LinkedIn. You've got to write down, what are my objectives? What am I trying to do? And even if it's on the back of an envelope, that'll just get something and get some focus going. And far too many of us 
are absolutely wasting our time when it, when it comes to LinkedIn. You know, whether you're using the app or whether you're using the desktop version, uh, you go online and the first thing you see is the news feed, which may or may not be relevant to you. Um, you then see the little red dot at the top right hand corner. Oh, maybe somebody sent me a message. Maybe somebody wants to connect with me. Uh, and then you go and see who wants to connect with you. And then you agonize, oh, should I be connected with them? Should I not be connected with them? Then you might go and visit a group and you find there's nothing going on in there. Uh, then you might go back to the homepage and it's all just a bit fluffy. Um, so many people are wasting their time, but and without a plan, a plan of attack, where you do something very, very specific each and every day, um, we're wasting our time. And it, it is a simple fact of, of life that... Um, if you have a plan on LinkedIn, you will suddenly start finding your profile views start going up. The people who want to talk to you start going up and the conversations that you have start going up as well. So get a plan, guys. Um, you know, I think there are still many, many people who think that LinkedIn is a job site. I mean, uh, it's a pretty fancy job site at that. Um, and yeah, LinkedIn still makes a, a big chunk of its money from people advertising uh, jobs, but it is way, way more than that. We're going to dig into it. So what is it exactly? I'm just going to put up the both columns here. What LinkedIn is trying to do, hand in hand with their owners, Microsoft, is to make LinkedIn an indispensable business tool. Um, if you want to advertise jobs, you can do that on LinkedIn. If you want to post blogs, you can do that on LinkedIn. If you want to find a, a massive resource of learning tools, you can do that on LinkedIn. If you want to put your corporate numbers on there, you can do that on LinkedIn. You, know, you probably noticed also the news, the latest news is on LinkedIn. They're trying to make it absolutely indispensable so that its users don't feel the need to go and visit other websites to get information on whatever it is they want to do. Um, so th in some respects, they're trying to be all things to everybody. But one of the most important things, LinkedIn, is a search engine. People often forget that. It is the people and expertise search engine. That's, that's really what it is. And it's important to remember that given all these features on LinkedIn, LinkedIn rewards users for using its features. And if, for example, it has recently tarted up one of its features, it rewards you even more. So, for example, company pages on LinkedIn have recently been upgraded. And if you use your company page, LinkedIn will reward you by making your posts, your content more visible in the search results. It's all about appearing high in the search results. Now, with 670 odd million people, We've got to make sure that we, that you, get found uh, in amongst the crowd. Um, there's a lot of speakers out there. There's a lot of coaches out there. There's a lot of consultants out there. So when somebody is looking for your expertise, we want to make sure that you do actually get found. So we're going to show you a few ways to actually do that. Now, the simple fact of life is, is if you are on LinkedIn, you are marketing yourself. Full stop. And if you are not already receiving inquiries for your services out of the blue from complete strangers, then arguably you are not marketing yourself as well as you could. So it's a really important thing. The algorithm will make sure that you get found when people are using it as a search engine. But there's a few ground rules there's a few techniques that you need to know to make sure that you are actually being found. So let's just sort of kind of walk through what typically happens for people who are looking for experts or speakers or coaches or consultants. And it all starts with you, yeah? Uh, you create your profile, um, you do some, you include some keywords in there. We'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. You do some stuff, some focused stuff on LinkedIn, and you also use some hashtags, and we'll explain that a little bit more as we go. So it all starts with you, okay? Um, and hopefully you will be found in the search results. And there are a certain number of people out there right now, this is the amazing thing, right now there are a bunch of LinkedIn members who are looking for people like you. So these people uh, will use the search engine, and let's imagine that you come up high in the search results. They find you, they decided to have a look at you, so they then look at your profile. And having looked at your profile, they might decide they want to connect with you. They might even send you a message. What's interesting is that 99.9% .9 of people, when they connect with other people on LinkedIn, never bother 
to customize the message. A lot of people don't realize that you can customize the message, but you can and you should, and you can do it from the mobile device, uh, a mobile device as well. So let's imagine they find you in the search results, they decide to connect with you, they decide to communicate with you. What then typically happens is that you will actually start exchanging um, some messages, either directly on the platform, and what we're really trying to do is to get to a point where we actually come off LinkedIn and go to a coffee shop or, or a Skype or a Zoom or whatever it is you want to do. It is extremely rare. It does happen, but it's extremely rare for someone to find you in the search results, send you a message, say, I want to connect with you and I want to book you for my conference uh, next year. That does happen, but what usually has to happen, and we know this, what usually has to happen is there's got to be an exchange of messaging. They're going to, you're going to talk on the phone or you're going to get to a coffee shop. For me, one of my main strategies on LinkedIn is to cut the messaging short and to get them into a coffee shop. That's really what, what I'm trying to do first and foremost. And if that goes well, at some way down the line, we'll end up in a champagne bar because there's been an exchange of value. That's fundamentally what goes on for most people. So we've got to make sure that, that we can leverage each and every step along the way. So what I'm going to focus on particularly today is the communication aspect and the making sure that you get found in the search results bit. Those are the two I'm going to really, really focus on. Now, what's quite important, I mentioned just now that at the end of the day, LinkedIn is a piece of software um, and it changes. Uh, LinkedIn has got uh, a habit of introducing new features without telling anybody. They've got a habit of removing features without telling anybody. Um, they change the algorithm from time to time. So stuff happens. Um, and, you know, we don't always find out about it. If any of you are interested, I've got a group on uh, Facebook called LinkedIn Secrets, um, where, where stuff does change, we update people and it says what's going on. So you might want to find that at some particular point. So you've got to stay on top of what's going on LinkedIn so that you can leverage any particular new features. It's also important that you do quite regularly update your profile. And right now, uh, during lockdown, uh, many, many speakers, the vast majority of speakers, um, are, events have been canceled or the ones that are in your diary are, are being postponed or they're being turned into virtual events. So in the last three weeks, um, I've kind of reinvented myself, like many speakers, I, I think, as a remote trainer, a remote speaker. Um, and I've even put that on my LinkedIn profile. Um, and you can see I've changed my header there, unparalleled LinkedIn lead generation training for unparalleled times, live and virtual training. So this is the first thing people see. I'm not going to take the chance uh, that people, you know, they might pass me by. It says right there in their face, I do remote training. I do online stuff. So, and you can see my headline underneath there. I've written it and I'm aiming deliberately at my target market um, in the hope that they're going to want some sort of remote training. And since doing this, um, I've spent, I've spent almost my whole days now, um, online doing this kind of stuff. So update and change your LinkedIn profile to suit things that are going on at a particular moment in time. It's also worth highlighting that bit there on the right hand side, um, in your experience section where you list out your jobs, your roles, stuff like that. Um, Whichever one is at the top of the list will appear on the right hand side at the top of your um, profile there. Now, Life Talk, um, so my main target market is uh, financial advisors. So, right now, I have made sure that my financial advice facing side of the business is right at the top there because financial advisors, and I would imagine many of you have clients like this, they still need to keep up their CPD. Um, they are looking for new clients, new leads as well. So I'm going all in with real focus on my prime target market at the moment. Um, so in the experience section, I put that one right at the top, marketing and lead generation for financial advisors. And as it's at the top of the experience section, it is appearing high up there on my profile. Um, other things I do are further down, so I might change that. I can drag and drop that. I can move that up and down depending on the circumstances at the time. I think right now, more than ever before, and I, I, you know, this is, this is sort of 
normal marketing common sense. But uh, right now, I think we've got the opportunity to be ultra clear about who we're targeting. Um, and that this goes down to this client avatar thing that people talk about. And it really means knowing, you know, what are they usually worried about? What are they worried about today? What are they thinking about right now? You know, if you know your target market inside out, back to front, you will know these things. So if I ask a financial, I know what financial advisors are thinking about right now. Literally, I know exactly what they're thinking about right now, today. Um, so all my marketing is aimed at what they are thinking about right now. And it's more likely to be what they're worried about right now. And if I've got potential solutions for that, that's what I'm going to put in front of them right up front and center. Now, for pretty well every speaker, every coach, every consultant, your prospects, all the prospects you will ever need are already on LinkedIn. They're there. Okay, we just need to make sure that they can find you. Um, so we need to find out where they hang out. Which groups are they in? What hashtags do they use? We then need to divert their attention just long enough to tell them a story, to uh, get pique some curiosity. Remember I talked about curiosity earlier. We need to tell them a story to get that curiosity and then we need to make them an offer. It's that simple. That's a, that's a kind of simple sales process. Um, but this is what works on LinkedIn. I said, trust the process. This is what works. Okay, so let's dig a little bit deeper. LinkedIn, it's approaching 700 million uh, members now. Um, so, you know, in terms of social networking platforms, social media platforms, it is still dwarfed by Facebook. But for our purposes as speakers, coaches, and consultants, there's a lot more focus in there. And there's all sorts of numbers and stats come out from time to time. And here's one from HubSpot that basically says, as a result of someone looking at your Twitter or your Facebook pages or your LinkedIn, you're far more likely to end up in a conversation that could lead to some business after they've looked at your LinkedIn profile, far more likely. Um, if you've got, uh, out of all the social platforms, uh, if you are using any of them, LinkedIn appears highest in Google search results, usually in uh, the third position. When you ask people, how has LinkedIn helped you? So the people are actually crushing it on LinkedIn. When you ask them how it's helped you, this is in order of what they answer. Research, people and companies comes out top of the list. So that says they're using it as a search engine, yeah? Reconnect with past associates and colleagues that do that second. Right now is a great time to reconnect with past associates, colleagues, and clients. We should all be doing that. And it doesn't mean going to sales mode. It just means a nice friendly message on LinkedIn said, oh, I just want to check in with you, make sure you're okay. Simple as that, you know, a simple human thing. And this is going to be a theme of what I'm talking about today, keeping it human, yeah? and building relationships with people who could influence potential customers. That's number three on the list. Isn't that an interesting one? What that is telling us is that, yes, we will do business directly with people we connect with on LinkedIn, but what is much more likely to happen is that we're gonna build relationships with people who will introduce us to potential customers the second degree connection, the third degree connection, yeah? So those are top three, I'm not gonna go through them all. Research, reconnect, and build relationships with people who could introduce us. Um, and you know, LinkedIn wins hands down on a variety of things that are really important to us. Compared with uh, Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore, making professional connections, LinkedIn way ahead. Improving the effectiveness of my referral network, LinkedIn way ahead. Cultivating prospects, LinkedIn way ahead. Enhancing current client relationships, LinkedIn way ahead. Here's something else I found that's quite interesting. I looked at my own website, and I hope that you all do this as well. Um, I looked at how long people stay on my website, and I compared that with people who come to my website from LinkedIn, and I compared it with everybody else, and I found that visitors who came to my website from LinkedIn stayed on my site for 10 minutes and everyone else stayed on my site for four minutes, which is a big, big difference. So the bounce rate is the percentage of people who arrive on your website and then leave without looking at a second page. 
why do you think they stick around longer? Because I have designed my website specifically for visitors from LinkedIn. I'm aiming it at them. So it is far more likely that they will actually stick around and not bounce off. Remember I said earlier that LinkedIn is the beginning of the funnel and at some point you've got to get people off LinkedIn and take them somewhere else. So I take people to a variety of different places, one of which is my website. Uh, so I've designed my website specifically so that it appeals to people who arrived from LinkedIn. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper. I hope you're finding this useful and you're getting a few nuggets so far. So LinkedIn fundamentally has three core themes to it and there's 10 core elements underneath. The three themes are uh, your identity and your reputation, networking and knowledge. And they are subdivided into uh, personal and corporate identity and reputation, connecting other people together and building your own network and learning and sharing. So these are the, the sort of core bits that are going on with LinkedIn. Uh, if I'm going too fast for one or two of you, don't forget that um, I am recording this, so you can get a copy later. And if any of you would like, actually like the slides themselves, again, drop me a line, philip at philipcalvert.com. Now these are the 10 core elements. Quite important that, that we get this. These are all the main bits to LinkedIn. Now for most of us, for most people, on LinkedIn, particularly speakers, coaches, and consultants, we're only using the top one, to be quite honest. Whereas LinkedIn will reward us by trying to use as many of these sections as we possibly can. In practice, that's not always gonna be easy, but there are certain bits that we can use and find particularly useful. Um, underpinning all of that is search. So if we can be featured in some way, shape, or form in each of these particular sections, it makes it much more likely that we will be uh, found in the search results. Okay, pressing on. So I mentioned right at the start, we need to have a plan. If we plan what we're trying to achieve on LinkedIn and then write down some specific activities, um, then the magic happens. So I will show you an example and I will show you some specific activities that work on LinkedIn right now. Fundamentally, your plan is going to be why are you on LinkedIn? What are you trying to achieve? And it's really, really important you measure your results. Knowing your numbers on LinkedIn is absolutely critical. So this is my plan um, on LinkedIn. I've tweaked it in the last week, but fundamentally, this is still my plan. And as I said, you can write on the back of an envelope, but this is it. My plan is to attract speaking and training business and also to sell books. Um, so I have to be visible where my clients and my targets are. Um, also, from a tactical point of view, I'm trying to create conversations with people, and I'll show you some examples later. And then I want to get them off LinkedIn. And the people I'm trying to connect with are meeting planners and conference organizers, are we all? Financial advisors, suppliers to financial advisors, School careers leads, I've written a book, uh, a LinkedIn book for school careers leads. So they're a target as well. And I also do some work in Indian tourism. So fundamentally, that is my plan. Um, how hard is that, yeah? Uh, and we could all, and you feel free to use that as a template, um, but get it written down, pin it up on your wall. And when you find, when you've got it pinned up on your wall, it actually makes your daily use of LinkedIn very much more focused than um, it might otherwise have been. Right now, as I said, I've tweaked my um, plan in recent times, and I'm now just focusing on financial advisors and suppliers to financial advisors. And the products or the services, if you like, that I'm uh, promoting to them are LinkedIn training, uh, wider online marketing training, seminar selling training, website conversion training, uh, my books, webinars, uh, online communities, I, I've, I run three online communities, so that is, they are one of the places that I try to send people to. Uh, and in terms of suppliers to financial advisors, um, I'm trying to get them to advertise in my communities that I run for financial advisors. So again, I have written this down and it's pinned on the wall. And as a result of that, it gives me a lot more focus when I'm doing my online activity. So let's talk a little bit about the, this value ladder thing, because it, it, to me, this is really, really important. Those of you that um, follow Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels, 
uh, he talks about the value ladder a huge amount and it makes so much sense. If you, if you imagine our website these days, um, and it's the same for most speakers, in, in this day and age, when someone who's never heard of you before, and they might have found you on LinkedIn, they arrive on your website, and we expect them to jump all the way up to the top and purchase our what is probably our most expensive service, conference speaking or whatever it is, without any intermediate steps along the way. That's a big ask in this day and age. And so it makes you realize the importance of a show real video because that gives people a sense of who you are. But it is still a big ask. People don't, re if they don't know us from Adam, uh, how can they trust us? How can they get to know us? How can they get a sense of who we are? How could they try before they buy? So I, I've, this is my personal value ladder aimed at financial advisors. Now, my most expensive service is a weekend marketing retreat for financial advisors. It's very expensive. Do it like once a year. Um, and we go to, it starts on a Friday and finishes on a Sunday evening. And we go to a very upmarket hotel and we get um, some other speakers in occasionally. And we get some nice food and maybe do a bit of yoga, something like that. But it is a deep dive into marketing for financial advisors. Now, I would love to be selling those every single day of the week. Um, and I could create a website that invites people to uh, come along to my weekend retreat. But the chances of somebody who doesn't know me deciding to get their credit card out and, and purchase that are, are extremely remote, extremely rare. So I've got to sort of give people the opportunity to get to know me, get to try and trust me. Uh, and I do that through a series of steps. And the steps start at the bottom. So if I meet every single financial advisor I ever meet, I invite them to join my uh, free Facebook group, for financial advisors. I've also got a group on LinkedIn because some financial advisors don't like Facebook, so they join the LinkedIn version instead. And that's free. And it is just jam packed solid with resources for financial advisors. There isn't a single question that any financial advisor could ask about how to run a financial advice business that hasn't been answered in that form. And it's free. Uh, and then occasionally, um, I'll offer a free ebook, and then if they like the free ebook, they might then say, go on to Amazon and say, well, let's see what else Phil's got, and they might purchase my book. It's an easy purchase for people to make. It's inexpensive, but you know they're getting some serious value now. Then I might invite them to come on a webinar. It might be a free webinar, but it might be a chargeable webinar. And if they like that, they then might get their credit card out and pay a couple of hundred pounds to come along to a live workshop. And some of them will want to go on for coaching calls and so on and so forth. Slowly but surely, we're pushing people towards the top. In fact, there's no pushing at all. If they like what they see, it makes it almost an inevitable next step for them to want to move up and up and up. And those of you that follow, say, people like Tony Robbins, uh, know exactly what I mean by um, a value ladder. You know, if you've never heard of Tony Robbins before, the first time you'll ever come across him will probably be a, a, a video on YouTube. And if you like one, you'll watch another, then you'll watch another. And before you know it, you have spent two or three hours watching Tony Robbins videos. Then you'll go over to his website, you'll get his free book. Uh, then you'll join one of his webinars and so on and so forth. And you might even end up, um, what is it, his platinum group or something like that. Well, you'll end up spending the weekend with him at his home in, um, in Fiji. That's a value ladder. And every single speaker could, and I believe should, create a value ladder. I think many, many speakers have got different products and services like this, but they're not ordered in a deliberate strategic way that is designed to push people right up to the top. Um, and as I said, LinkedIn is a place where I start gathering people and driving them towards free uh, communities or free eBooks. And, and here it is, an, uh, here is that shown visually. Um, on the right hand side, I've got how I deal with suppliers to financial advisors and on the left hand side, I've got financial advisors. So we have a chat on LinkedIn. We, I send them uh, to the bottom of my value ladder and they can join a community and gradually move up towards the top. You know, most people don't end up going to the weekend retreat, but I'm deliberately sending them somewhere. I'm sending them up that ladder so that they increasingly spend more money. That's essentially what it's about at the end of the day. 
Um, I mentioned earlier um, having a plan for your use of LinkedIn. Uh, something that I found <laughs> amazingly effective is selling a plan um, and selling a plan for a particular market. Um, these are typically called low content books. Um, and basically what I've done is I've written about four or five pages um, aimed at um, financial advisors in this particular case. And I've got other versions of this for, uh, for other markets. Four or five pages explaining how to create a plan. And then it's got lots and lots of blank pages where they can fill in, fill in the rest. Um, and they they sort of kind of act as a journal as well. So people can journal their success. I mean, each of these is about 300 pages long. Most of the pages are blank, but the beginning is, uh, you know, the first few pages got some very high content. So if you have a particular target market that you serve, you could create a low content book, which is a plan uh, based around your area of expertise. Um, so if I profess to be able to teach financial advisors how to attract leads from LinkedIn, I've written a little plan to show them how to do it. Um, and then they can journal their success, but, but by physically writing in the book, uh, they are getting uh, a lot more value out of it as well. It's a bit like a workbook. If you like those of you that do workshops, you might have a workbook. So it's a bit like creating a workbook. So as, as well as having a plan on LinkedIn, why not sell a plan as well? And these have, these have served me very well indeed. Okay, on to profile pages. So the single biggest mistake that people make on LinkedIn is, what do you think that is? The single biggest mistake that people make on LinkedIn. You might just want to scribble that into the, um, into, into the chat there. What do you think the single biggest mistake is that people make on LinkedIn? Let's see, inappropriate photo, thank you, Mark. Rubbish headlines, that's a good one. It's all about them putting their job tile, being passive, no photo. Graham, that's a really good one. I mean, not having a photo is, is a cardinal sin. You might as well not being on there, not having a plan. Thank you, David, that's an interesting one. Um, okay, so let's have a look and see what the answer might be. If I can change the slide. Not fully completing their profile. And the emphasis being on fully, the word fully. So everyone's got a profile on LinkedIn, but very few of them um, are fully completed. Um, now, as uh, you all registered for this particular webinar, I had a quick look at some of your profiles. Um, and what I saw, one or two of them were fully completed, but most were kind of like half completed. And the reason for that is some of the sections aren't as obvious as they could be. Um, and LinkedIn's even got some stats on this. Uh, those users with complete profiles are 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn. And just a, you know, a finger in the air, that, that feels about right to me. So you must fully complete your profile. For those of you worrying that social media, this is all going to be very time consuming. This is the time consuming bit. But we've got plenty of time on our hands over the next few weeks, I would imagine. So now is the time to really go to town on filling out your profile and you need to fill it out in detail. Other mistakes people made, I saw one or two of you mentioned there, unbelievably not including their contact information. Why you would not want to put your contact information on there, I don't know. Not engaging with other people and their content, which is really important, we're going to talk more about that, and forgetting this wonderful concept, people by people. Remember, the human element is critically important. So, I say fully complete your profile. These are the sections of uh, a typical LinkedIn profile. And since I put this slide together, they've actually added another section, uh, but it's an automated section, so it's appeared anyway, but we'll cover that later. So you need to fill in all of this, literally all of it. Um, and there's a certain way to do it, which I'm gonna explain uh, in just a moment as well. So if you can, have a stab at filling every single section out it will it literally it will make an immediate and measurable difference to your visibility on LinkedIn and the number of profile views that you get um, so appearing in the search results is all important and just some of the things you need to do fully complete your profile build a large network now um, there's different schools of thought about networking and neither is right nor wrong in an ideal world in the real world we would actually not build a large network. I think most of us would want to build 
a very focused network. Now, that might be large, it might be small, but a focused network. However, on LinkedIn, they reward you for having a large network. So from my point of view, um, I accept connection requests from pretty well absolutely everybody who wants to connect with me, with the exception of obvious spammers. And, you know, they stick out like a sore thumb. You need to include hashtags in your posts. We'll talk more about that later. You need to engage with other people's content and we need to decide on your keywords. So do these things here, you will appear higher in search results. And I'm gonna give you more detail on that. Um, having a fully completed profile on LinkedIn also helps you with your Google search results as well. So if I Google my name, my own website comes up top. Uh, the governor of Maryland in 1626 comes in second. Um, and my LinkedIn profile comes up in third place when I Google my name. Okay, so let's nail this profile. And there's a clue, what I'm about to say, there's a clue in this particular picture here. Um, we've got to differentiate ourselves. We've got to stand out from the crowd. We don't want to bore the pants off people, okay? So we've got to ask ourselves some very simple questions. Does our profile page capture attention immediately? Does it empathize with our visitors' problems? Does it communicate in a tone that's unique to you? And do we avoid unnecessary jargon? We do actually need some jargon. I'll explain that in a minute. And does it have a clear uh, call, call to action? You know, in any other, if we were doing sales training right now, I think the sales trainers amongst us would say that looks like a fairly typical um, sales approach. But uh, you apply it to your LinkedIn profile as well. But underneath it all, underpin it all with the concept that people buy people. Yes, you've got expertise. Yes, people will be looking for that expertise, but they will buy you before they will buy your expertise. So I've devised a kind of a profile test. Um, it's a and it's quite a high bar and your profile has to meet this high bar. And the high bar is, yep, you've got to be absolutely irresistible. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. Now, my wife is a a careers lead for a secondary school and she hires speakers to come in and talk to the students so I one day I said to her uh, I sent her an email while she was at work and said um, what how would you define this if you're looking uh, on LinkedIn for speakers or you're looking for people how would you define uh, irresistible um, 30 minutes later she replies she sends me an email there's no she doesn't write an email she just attached a picture and that's the picture that she attached to the email. I thought, okay, and half an hour later, she sends me another email. And half an hour later, she sends me another email. And then finally, she sends me an email and she writes in there, I like this game. And she sent me this attached to an email. So I, I kind of get what irresistible can mean at one particular level. Yeah, I get that. That's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is show you now a real LinkedIn profile. Um, and we're going to see if um, the profile meets the meets the bar that I've set. So I'm going to show you this now. Okay. Um, just have a look at that picture. This is a real LinkedIn profile. And you, you might want to put in the chat there, um, you know, just at a gut human level, how do you how do you feel about this particular person? Yeah, just at a gut human level, how do you feel about this this particular person? You don't know his name, you don't know what he does. Um, I mean, for all we know, that that could be taken in a prison uh, or a police station, for as far as we know. Prisoner leaving work. Yeah, thank you very much. Looks friendly. Yeah, jolly salesman. Two people have written jolly there approachable and yet you don't even know who this guy is what he's done or anything about it it's not a professionally taken photo either so whenever i show this to, to people most people feel that this, this guy looks okay yeah he looks okay so this is art and art runs an office supplies outlet in milwaukee um and he figures that one office supply outfit looks exactly the same as another. They all sell the same stuff um, on pricing. It's a race to the bottom. Uh, so Art figures that he needs to differentiate his business. And the way he differentiates his business is through himself. So what I'm going to show you now is some extracts from Art's LinkedIn profile. Let's just have a look at 
some of the things that Art has written on his LinkedIn profile. I'm going to grab some water while you have a quick look at that. Okay, and there's more. So one of two things is happening here. He's either just taking the mickey out of the LinkedIn system, and that's absolutely fine. Lots of people do that. You occasionally find some very, very funny LinkedIn profiles. Or this is how Art differentiates himself. The testimonials for this guy's business are absolutely off the scale. Uh, he's also got an online service, but no one uses his online service because people, good people in Milwaukee would rather get in their pickup trucks and drive a few hours uh, to go to the store themselves in the hope that Art will actually be there um, when they go there. Um, I connected with this guy quite a few years ago now. I looked at his profile and an interesting thing happened. Um, he sent me a, a message. He said, dear Mr. Social Media Guy, he said, thanks for taking a look at my profile. I imagine that you're putting a presentation together on how not to use LinkedIn. Feel free to use any of my uh, profile. And he said, and if you're ever in the Milwaukee area, come on around, we'll have one of my famous lunches. Now, that's what this is all about. This is what I'm getting at today. It's people by people. Now, this is how he's differentiating himself. Now, I'm not saying that overnight we've all got to start laughing and joking and uh, and presenting ourselves in a way that we are not on LinkedIn. But what I am suggesting is that we try and get very much more of ourselves on LinkedIn. Yeah, really important. Unfortunately, these are the words that are on our profiles. As I said, I've had a look at a few profiles and these are the words that I saw. And they don't quite jump off the page like Art's words, do they? You know, I'm sure all of us can tick off a few of these. Um, it's just dull. It's just boring. Where do these words belong? Probably on a CV, yeah? They don't belong on a real-time networking platform where people buy people. Now, in fairness to all of you, uh, every year LinkedIn uh, releases a list of the most overused keywords, and this is the current list. And the list is pretty well the same uh, every single year. So we've got to really think about the words and the phrases that we're actually using on LinkedIn in both our profile and in our status updates as well. Just a few quick tips here. So write it in the first person. Stop this third person nonsense, yeah? Uh, John has been a, a professional speaker for the last 20 years now. John, we all know that you wrote it, John, okay? It just looks silly. So write it in the first person. Be nice and punchy. Tell stories. Get your punctuation right. Say something that will grab people's attention. If music is your first love, put it on the first line of your summary section, get people's attention, and then explain why music is your first love. Aim it at your perfect dream client. Now, as speakers, coaches, and consultants, we should all do this. We should write down on a piece of paper what our perfect dream client looks like, the avatar, yeah? Um, and aim your profile at them in mind. And if we know our perfect clients, we know our perfect niche, we know their problems, we know what they're worried about, we know what they're thinking about, write it aimed at them and do it as soon as you possibly can, yeah? What you'll also find is if you aim your profile at your perfect dream client, the people who are not quite your perfect dream client are actually attracted as well. They kind of aspire at a subconscious level to be your perfect dream client. So you can be assertive, you can be direct, get some personality, get some media in there, I'll explain that in a minute, and make points through visuals or presentations. Those are just a few quick tips, but we're going deeper. Um, when, when I say be um, focused and direct, I mean, for example, if you were a chiropractor, on the top line, or even in your summary section, you could write something like, do you suffer from chronic elbow pain? Um, and then show you've got the answer. Um, be clear. There's a way too much fluffy stuff um, on LinkedIn profiles. We need, to be, we need to be more clear than ever before right now. So your profile is not a CV, okay? Um, it's your online reputation. It's your online character. Um, get across your expertise, yes, but also get across who you are as a person. Equally, your profile is not a circus poster. Some people would argue that Art's profile, I just showed you, some people would argue that Art's profile is verging into circus poster territory. But he's thought it very, he's thought it through very, very carefully. 
Okay, so now let's get down to keywords. Now, if you do nothing else as a result of this webinar today, do this, okay? Um, we said earlier we need to fully complete our profile, but that it needs to be completed in a certain way. Um, we're not going to do this exercise right now because it will take up too much time, but feel free to do it um, um, afterwards. What you need to do is get a sheet of paper, whatever your writing tool of choice is, and write down 12 keywords that sum up um, who you are, your expertise, the problems you solve. So using the examples of um, financial advisors, like I mentioned earlier, a keyword could be retirement planning um, or inheritance tax planning. So inheritance tax planning is one keyword. So whatever you do as a speaker, coach or consultant, come up with a list of 12 keywords. These are the words that if someone typed them into the search box on LinkedIn, we would hope that your profile would come up top of the list or at least on page one of the search results. This is a critically important job to do. Come up with 12 keywords. When you've done that, the next thing you need to do is to order them in order of importance, number them in order of importance. So the single most important keyword to you, the one that you want to be found for more than anything else, comes up top of the list, it's number one, yeah? So 12 keywords, number them in order of importance, and then what you need to do is take the top five keywords on that list, go down to the local tattoo shop and have them tattooed on your heart, because this is you from now on when you're online. Actually, what you need to do is take those top five keywords and put them into as many of your profile sections as you possibly can. Now, what you could do is just copy and paste them in. That would actually work. Uh, but what you really need to do is to weave them into some flowing prose um, that makes actually some sense. So that's your keyword list. But you might also want to think about some other keywords to complement what you're doing. And some of these may even be in your top five list. So think about keywords for the services you offer. Uh, keywords for technical skills that you might have. So note remote training in there, yeah. Uh, industries that you serve. Um, I mentioned no jargon, but um, I target financial advisors big time, so I include a little bit of the jargon that financial advisors use in my keyword list. Um, keywords for business skills that you might have and also keywords for locations that you target. So if you are a customer service expert in Manchester, customer service expert Manchester is one keyword, okay? Do that job, that will make an immediate difference to your visibility and the number of profile views that you get. But really think about, don't, you wanna avoid fluffy stuff. Don't put great service or that sort of nonsense on your, in your keywords list. Remember LinkedIn's a search engine. Choose keywords that will lead to you when people search for them. You also need to choose your primary hashtags. Uh, LinkedIn's big on hashtags right now and you need to include up to three in your posts, your, um, be they comments on other people's stuff or your own status updates. So that could be hashtag leadership, hashtag customer service, hashtag sales, whatever. But come up with a list, I would try and come up with a list of about five keywords and then really narrow it down to three and use these three keywords consistently. There is no point in creating a unique keyword to you. Uh, lots of people suggest you do that, but no one is searching for that unique keyword. Go for the big ones. Okay. Um, you also note that your person, you should personalize your URL. Everyone gets their own URL on LinkedIn. Um, and try and get, if you can, some keywords into your URL. So I've even taken my name out of my LinkedIn URL um, and replaced it by, key, by keywords there. So just by doing that will help me to appear higher in the search results for meeting planners or conference organizers who are looking for a keynote speaker or a sales speaker, something like that. Um, it's not the be all and end all, but it helps. All these little things help to make you high, uh, appear higher in the search results. You do this in the uh, edits, in the um, edit settings. Now LinkedIn's settings um, and privacy settings are quite comprehensive and they move things around. So you're gonna need to spend a little bit of time just digging around in there to find the right setting for that. Here's another little tip worth mentioning. Um, 
if you have a, a, a surname that is has an interesting spelling, um, you could also include in the summary section, put some common misspellings. Maybe I met, met Katie at a networking event last night um, and uh, she'd run out of business cards and um, we decided we we're going to have a chat. And she, uh, I, you know, the following morning, I can't find her. I, can't, I didn't know how to spell her name, but she's helped me to find her by putting some common misspellings of her name. So whatever I type into the search box is going to help me to find her. Yeah, uh, Bill. Uh, he's does the same some of you know may, may know Bill actually uh, he's put some common misspellings of his own name in there as well so a little tip but worth doing if your if your name has an interesting spelling um, here's an old version of my profile um, keywords in your professional headline the headline is underneath your name now what do you notice about my professional headline um, when I was using that is there anything you notice about it Okay, first thing is, it's a question. It's a question that's aimed at one of my target markets, yeah? Um, if you can do that, subconsciously people will answer that question. And the answer we want them to be thinking in their head is yes. That's what we're trying to get them to, to be thinking, yes. Uh, what else do you notice about uh, my headline there? Well, it is also capitalized. Uh, it's a very old uh, copywriting technique to capitalize the first letter of each word it makes it, all it does it it makes it look more important than it actually is um copywriting is really really important any of you um and we really need to learn it uh, it's a key skill for speakers coaches and consultants these days uh, anybody any of you want a couple of resources on how to be a better copywriter just drop me an email philip at philip calvert and i'll send you uh, a link to a couple of resources uh, that you can use now, Jeremy here, he's a financial advisor, and you'll note he's put keywords in his name. Yes, you are allowed to do that, um, as long as you don't abuse it, yeah, like, like this one here, yeah? Um, so that will help Jeremy to appear higher in search results when people are looking for a financial planner or a life planner. Uh, a financial life planner is a kind of cross between a financial planner and a life coach these days. So you can put keywords in your name. I would think carefully about doing that, um, but it's, it's again, it will help you with search results as well. Okay, then we move on to the experience section as well. Now, the experience section is an interesting one. What most people think the experience section is, is to show where you are working right now, the job you've got or your employer or the company you work at. Um, and yes, that's fine, you can do that. But what it really is better at is what you are doing right now. Um, so as speakers, this is fantastic. As coaches, this is fantastic. And I just wanna give you some examples. So in my experience section, I could just leave it at that speaker, LinkedIn expert, trainer, whatever, okay? But what I also do is I add um, new ones for individual speaking gigs. Um, so for one and a half hours, I was working uh, at a financial advice event in South Africa. For one hour, I was speaking on social media and tourism in India. Um, for one hour, I did a presentation for Volvo. For one hour, I did a presentation for Maserati. And look at the dates. One month, that's the shortest period of time you can do. Now, I'm not going to put every single client on there. I'm just going to put the good ones. Um, but it gives viewers of my profile an opportunity to get a, a, a better feeling for the sort of organizations that I'm working with. And it's also an opportunity for me to do what? To get more keywords onto my profile. Um, contact information. So you can show up to three websites. So I've got philipcalvert.com, I've got financialadvice.marketing, and I've got another one as well. But the bit I want you to look at is the free text that comes after it. Um, after it says philipcalvert.com, it says book me to speak at your event. After financialadvice.marketing, it says marketing for IFAs. These are what? These are keywords. Now, um, to do that, to add in the keywords, when you are adding in your website, in the settings, you want to choose other. I think the other options are website, blog, something like that. Choose the other option. And once you've chosen that, you can add, you can type in that free text there. Again, what it is doing is giving me the opportunity 
to uh, give a call to action, but also to get keyword more keywords onto my profile. Um, I would also recommend that you show your birthday. In the settings, uh, you have the option as to whether or not to show your birthday. Now, you don't want to show your birthday just so you get lots of birthday cards, uh, but there is a, a very specific reason that I show my birthday. Um, my birthday last year, 462 people wished me happy birthday on LinkedIn. The vast majority of them just sent the ready-made message. Um, so some of them customized it. Uh, which is nice for me, but what this is giving me is the opportunity to start a conversation with people. And what's interesting is that people you've completely forgotten about will send you happy birthday. And then you can get back to them and say, hi, Sue. Oh, thanks for the great wishes. How are you? What's going on in your business right now? Um, and sometimes uh, I've had messages from people where they'd actually asked me to pitch for a piece of business uh, or, or a speaking opportunity, and I'd forgotten to do it. Um, and there, be, there are times where I've, somebody sent me a birthday wish, and I thought, oh my goodness, I forgot to get back to them about something. And I said to them, uh, I don't suppose that opportunity is still going. And they said, yes, it is. Um, and so putting your birthday on there gives the opportunity for people to talk to you and for you to talk to them. Remember I said right at the beginning, people buy people on this. And what I'm trying to do is start conversations. So if LinkedIn has got a tool on it, that helps me to have conversations with people, then I'm going to use it. Okay. I think you also um, want to be proud of your LinkedIn profile. You know, you want to be putting uh, a link to your profile on your business cards, um, on your website. In fact, LinkedIn, there's even a page of your website where you can get a little badge. Um, there it is. There's the page there. Um, and you can put the badge in your uh, email signature, all that sort of thing. So be proud of your LinkedIn. Uh, a profile treat it as an asset of your business it's really really important so they give you the code drop it into your website if you can't do it your kids will do it for you don't worry about that uh, another really important setting is the who can see you setting now um, there are fundamentally three uh, settings there's no one can see you when you're on linkedin your connections only and all linkedin members um, for Personally, I would suggest that you try to be as visible as you possibly can on LinkedIn. A lot of people are shocked to discover when they go into these particular settings that the default is to minimal visibility. So you want to make sure, be as visible as you feel comfortable being. But you want more people to look at your profile. You want to be as visible as you possibly can be. You also want to hide distractions. Um, Let's say I'm looking for a financial advisor for sake of argument, or I'm looking for a speaker, or I'm looking for a coach. But in this example, I'm looking for a financial advisor. And I've used the search box, and a whole bunch of financial advisors have come up in the search results, and I've decided that I'm going to have a look at Tom. I'm going to have a closer look at Tom. Now, this is a screenshot of Tom's profile. Um, but I've blanked something out. Do any of you know what it is that I have blanked out from Tom's profile? Any of you want to have, hazard a guess at what that might be? This is an actual screenshot of his profile, but I've blanked something off. Getting a couple of answers here. Let's see if anybody gets it. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. I'm going to reveal a little bit of it. Yep, it's the people also viewed down the right-hand side. And you've got to ask the question, who are these people to Tom? Answer, his competitors. And you, you've got to ask the question, would Tom or any of you watching this for that, but do you want a list of your competitors on your own profile? And for most people, the answer is going to be no. And it's entirely possible that although I've chosen to look at Tom's profile, I'm going to look down the right hand column down there and I can see, oh, Liam, he's got letters after his name. That makes him look important. And Adam, he's uh, got letters after name, and he's a chartered financial planner. Tom doesn't seem to be, a ch so chartered sounds good. So there's a good chance that I might now go and look at Adam. And although Tom's appeared high in the search results, uh, Adam might actually get my attention. He might even get my business. So most of us have got a list of our competitors visible on our own LinkedIn profile. Good news is you can turn it off. It then deep in the settings, you can turn that off so that people can't see a list of your competitors 
on your profile. And it's really, really important that you do that. Yeah, you want to get the attention, not your competitors. Okay, on to photos. Somebody mentioned photos earlier. You need to have a great photo. It needs to be friendly and professional. Um, and you need to get attention. Now, let's just make this point. There's been all sorts of research done. If you haven't got a photo, you just, just don't bother, okay? If you haven't got a photo, just don't bother. Leave LinkedIn now, don't bother. You must have a photo. Now, there's photos and there's photos. And by and large, it needs to be friendly and professional. Remember, I talked about people by people. You need to get it right. And I just want to show you some examples of profiles. Uh, Emma's a financial advisor. What, what do we think about Emma's profile photo on LinkedIn? Emma's a lovely lady, by the way. But what do we think about her photo? It's not ideal. You know, I want to see the whites of her eyes. Um, so it's not ideal. Adam, on the other hand, it's friendly. It's relaxed. It shows a sort of more modern sort of workplace these days. Now, something interesting happens when we like the look of somebody on LinkedIn. Uh, and I know that LinkedIn profile photos are round at the moment. They change that periodically. What humans tend to do is if we like the look of a profile on a social networking platform, we tend to click or tap on that photo. And on LinkedIn, the photo gets bigger. So if you haven't updated your photo recently on LinkedIn, I suggest you do that. You're now allowed to um, upload a fairly sizable file. Uh, I think it's up to eight megs or something like that these days. So that when people do click on your photo, they get a closer look at you. Yeah. So do that. So what do we think about Andy's profile photo? Yeah. I mean, not great, is it? Bart, this is his profile photo. This is a financial advisor. Uh, unbelievably. This is a financial advisor. So we re we've got to think about this. And people put stuff on LinkedIn thinking it is just another social networking platform. Uh, they use other people's pictures as well. Uh, this one, but this one's interesting. Now, Ed is the, the, the financial advice equivalent of art that I showed you earlier. Uh, quirky sort of guy he cha uh, Ed changes his so his clients expect this kind of stuff from him um, and he's looking for a certain type of client that gets his sort of humor so there's some kind of sense behind what he's trying to do do here this is not a financial advisor but it's a real LinkedIn profile photo he's on there as well uh, and again I collect the funnies that when we find them on. but uh, I had a closer look at this particular profile and I noticed that, you know, you can join groups on LinkedIn. Yep, there's a group for people who make wooden toys. Uh, and this is so, so important. There's a group for pretty well everyone on LinkedIn. I'm going to give you an example of that uh, in a minute or two. Um, join groups, join communities, hang out where your target markets are, yeah? Um, and again, just a few real LinkedIn profile photos that are really aren't doing people any favors. This one, on the other hand, now, this is a guy who runs a Lexus dealership in the center of London. His passion in life is the outdoor world. Uh, he loves climbing, hiking, walking, um, all that stuff. And he puts that on his LinkedIn profile. And so if you do have a photo that's a little bit different from the LinkedIn norm, this is his LinkedIn profile photo. If you do have a photo that's a little bit different, have put some context to it. And so he puts in his LinkedIn profile, I just love the outdoor life. I've climbed this mountain. I've climbed that mountain and all the rest of it. You know, he only needs one person who's looking for a Lexus or a Lexus dealership who also likes the outside world, the outdoor life. And, you know, they're not going to go to someone else because they have something in common. Um, and having something in common is very, very important on LinkedIn. So learn from the people who know what they're talking about. Jeff Boss at LinkedIn his profile photo, friendly and professional. Dara, CEO at Uber, friendly and professional. Melanie at Google, friendly and professional. And some guy I found here, friendly and professional. Okay, what else do we need to do on our photos? I think for most of us, when we're putting up a photo on LinkedIn, we have a tendency to think, well, we don't, we've got to look confident. Uh, we've got to look competent. And I, I think a lot of speakers do this. Um, that's actually not what human beings are looking for when they want to engage with other people. An actual fact, the psychologists tell us that one of the things we're looking for most of all is, are they trustworthy? Um, I, I believe, I'm told that the only reason we shake hands when we meet somebody uh, is to prove that we're not concealing a weapon. 
Um, so trustworthiness is really, really important. So that, again, that's something to think about in your profile photo. Um, do you look trustworthy? Uh, how you measure that, I don't know, maybe ask a friend, ask a colleague, uh, but try and get an element of trustworthy. One way of doing that, I've seen some people doing, um, is if you've, part, if, if you've got certain qualifications to have your profile photo, but to have the, uh, the certificates on the wall behind you. I mean, you're not taking a picture of the certificates, but they're just there as a sort of subliminal thing um, that, that you, you are an expert, you are qualified. It's important to add media to your profile. And these days you can add pretty well anything to your LinkedIn profile. You can add PDFs, you can add uh, images of you speaking, you can put spreadsheets, you can put PowerPoint presentations. And it's really important you do that because not everybody wants to read your carefully crafted prose on your website. Some people just like to look at pretty pictures, yeah? So do that. Um, and you can add these, add these media to the experience section. Now, an interesting thing happened. LinkedIn, as you probably know, gives you stats on profile views that you get. Um, and I discovered when LinkedIn first introduced the ability to be able to add media to your profile, I added these pictures here uh, and look what happened to my profile views. Absolute jump. So if you've not got lots of media on your profile, go add some in. Um, you can add, as I said, all sorts of different things, but infographics are really, really good ways of doing that. You don't need to be a professional graphic designer. Go to Canva, canva.com um, and create some infographics. And I think I've got an example here. Yeah, uh, a financial advisor in the States, you know, he could have written a blog or an article about how to improve your credit score, um, but he decided to do it as an infographic. Um, and so some people are gonna find that a lot more appealing than uh, text. There's also a brand new feature on LinkedIn um, where an the images on your profile um, are arranged into a featured section. Here, uh, Richard McCann has got some images, and this is quite a big section now. It appears uh, fairly near the top of your profile. You want to go check that out. Um, they're rolling it out right now, so you might actually have that already, um, but it's an opportunity to show off your favorite images, your favorite bits of media that you've got, okay? Uh, and don't forget the big header right at the top of your profile. That is a magnificent piece of real estate that is available to everybody on LinkedIn. You don't need to have premium membership for that. Uh, make the use of that, yeah? So if you are a speaker, you wanna have a picture of you speaking. Um, what you could also do is, uh, you can't do this on LinkedIn, so you wanna take your header image, go to a site like Canva or whatever, a tool that you'll use and add some text on top to really grab people's attention. Pete uh, is a financial advisor down in Cornwall, but he also is a YouTuber and he's got his own podcast. So he's using the header image to show a couple of stills uh, from his YouTube and his podcasting work that he does. Um, images that are uploaded through your mobile device. Uh, the algorithm seems to, seems to like that as well. Uh, when I was speaking out in India, um, they have an elephant. <laughs> Some of the big conferences, elephants seem to turn up. So you've got to have a selfie with an elephant. Upload that uh, using your mobile device uh, and put a little caption to it. And ideally in that caption include some keywords. So I, I think when I uploaded that picture on the left, I put, um, I'm speaking here in India on social media for Indian tourism professionals. So upload some photos, maybe you're speaking uh, on the right there, that's a, I think that's the, I um, can't remember the name of the theater in London now, off the top of my head. Um, but again, I uploaded that to my profile as a status update from the mobile device. And I put, I'm speaking here in London today, um, great venue, blah, blah, blah. Um, and if you meet up with other speakers as well, again, take selfies, upload them to, uh, LinkedIn, but include some keywords in the text in your status update. Yep. Okay, moving on to the summary section. I hope you're finding this useful. Um, now, we're not all professional copywriters. So one approach is to use bullet points. Okay, keep it short, keep it simple, but make sure you've got keywords in there. Uh, this guy's really, really gone to town on the bullet points. Um, you know, that's a bit over the top, but you know, He's making his points really, really clearly there. Now, Tina is a financial advisor in North London and she's opted not to go for the bullet point thing, but uh, she 
understands the importance of keywords. So if I now shine a forensic torch on Tina's profile, it reveals, guess what, keywords. And if we just look at the uh, first paragraph alone, financial planning, financial planning, financial advisor, financial planning. So she's got one of her keywords she's repeated three times and she's got another main keyword in there as well. Now, if you're not doing, well, if you, whether you're doing bullet points or whether you're doing it freestyle like this, it's important to get your main keywords into the first paragraph of your summary section or high up the summary section. When Google comes to visit your LinkedIn profile, um, it only looks at the top of your summary section and then it goes off to look at somebody else. So get your main keywords uh, high up in the summary section of your profile. Now here's, I was, it's not a hidden section, but it's one of the, it's a section of your LinkedIn profile that is becoming more and more important and it's not immediately obvious. You need to dig around before you actually find it. Now, what, where we're going with this is, is that, I, mean, I think we all know this, that more of us as consumers will purchase products and services based on the perception of an organization's ethical credentials. And LinkedIn has got uh, a section where you can tell people what you care about um, and you can use them as a differentiator. So, you know, if you care about the environment, then you want to tell people that in this particular section of your LinkedIn profile. Um, and LinkedIn gives you a variety of different options uh, that you can choose to highlight on your LinkedIn profile. But again, it could make all the difference. If you care about the environment and it says that on your LinkedIn profile and you care about your carbon footprint as a speaker, um, you want to put that on your LinkedIn profile. And, you know, it only needs one meeting planner who it also cares about the environment and carbon footprints to chance upon your profile and you've got something in common. And that's really, really important. Uh, Martin is a financial advisor just down the road from me, uh, and he's put his volunteer experience on his LinkedIn profile. He runs Cranley Parkroom. He's chairman of Cranley and Groom. He's a committee member of Cranley Chamber of Commerce. So get the things that you do, that you're volunteering things, and get those on your LinkedIn profile in that dedicated section. If there's something that you're interested in, LinkedIn's actually got a whole separate website. Um, which talks more about this kind of things where you can actually offer yourself as a mentor for young people as well and you can see the link there again when you get the slides go have a visit go have a look at that now the skills section um, really really important section this it's a bit of a rough and ready section but it is a quick and dirty way for you to highlight your main skills and for people to um, recommend you or not so much recommend you but but um, confirm that you have particular skills uh, and the skills are divided into five your top skills your industry knowledge tools that you use your interpersonal skills and anything else I actually put um, gin and tonic in my skills section at one point and guess what I get messages from people on LinkedIn and say oh I saw gin and tonic making on your LinkedIn profile how do you make it um, the reason I do that is so that I can start a conversation with people so list out your skills um, Fairly obvious that one um, but you, what you can also do is you can click on individual skills and you can see who um, gave you an endorsement for a particular skill so what do you think it would be a good thing to do if somebody endorses you for a particular skill anyone got any ideas what would be a good thing to do if someone endorses you for a particular skill well how about say thank you 99% of people on LinkedIn never bother to say thank you when someone endorses you for a skill. Why do you think it's a good idea to say thank you? Well, A, because it's a human thing to do, and B, because it starts a conversation. Really, really important. What do you put in those conversations? I've got some scripts that sometimes help out. What about art? Let's have a look at his skills. What's art put down as his skills? <laughs> Invisible to women, more patient than I should be with people who are stupid but he's also got sales. Sales is his number one skill. So art is continuing his differentiation theme, his humor theme throughout his LinkedIn profile, and he's even brought it into the skills and endorsement section. Um, okay, so our profile is now set up. What do we do next? 
for most of us as speakers, coaches, and consultants, I would really recommend that you focus on profile views. Get people to visit your profile. Really important to remember, no one visits your profile by accident. They always do it on purpose. Um, you could do any of these things here and more. There's a lot more things, but you do any of these things on this list here, it could result in someone visiting your profile. It is simply, you know, this is, this is a slide worth printing off when you get them. Put it on the wall. Do any of these things here and someone could end up looking at your profile. So there are some key strategies that you really, really need to be doing on LinkedIn in a, uh, right now. And I'm just going to whip through this list really quickly and then I'm going to give you some examples of just some of them. Status updates. The worst type and the most common type of status update that we see on LinkedIn is where people go on and they, and they put something like, check out my latest blog. Um, that's the worst kind of status update that you can put on and LinkedIn will penalize you for putting something like that on there because it's dull, it's boring and by including a link to your blog you are encouraging people to leave LinkedIn albeit temporarily. So LinkedIn penalizes people for encouraging them to leave the, to leave the site. Video status updates, I'll show you an example in just a minute. Commenting on other people's content is a really powerful strategy right now. Comment on niche content, I'll talk about that in a minute. Comment in groups, live streaming on company pages, and audio messages and video messages. These are key things that you should be doing on LinkedIn right now, and LinkedIn will reward you when you do it. When I say video status updates, uh, Richard McCann, you know, he gets this. Richard understands LinkedIn now. He knows the importance of a story-based status update, but he's now putting little videos that he's putting on there as status updates. And you know, I think it's only a matter of time before we have video profiles on LinkedIn. But uh, you know, you can do that right now. Use status updates and do a little bit of video. Stick it as a status update on your LinkedIn profile. Um, I talk about people contacting you on, on LinkedIn and us contacting other people. A lot of people don't realize you can send voice messages to people on LinkedIn. You do that through the app. You know, if you want to stand out from the crowd, differentiate yourself, send someone a voice message instead. In fact, you can also send video messages as well. Um, I mentioned linked uh, company pages. Um, not everybody has got live streaming on their company pages just yet, but those people who do have live streaming, are reporting that it is absolutely phenomenal and the number of people visiting their profiles as a result has absolutely rocketed. So keep an eye out for that. If you, uh, I mean, you should have a company page, whether you're a, a solopreneur, um, sole trader, whatever you are, set up a company page and use the tools. LinkedIn will reward you for using the tools in the company page. So really, really important, don't ignore them. I know a lot of people, they're not quite sure, should you? I think everybody should have a company page, even if you're a solopreneur. In terms of what content do you put on your company pages? Well, if you've got the live streaming thing, fine, use that. But you know, use put the same content that you put on your personal status updates, put that in your company pages as well. I haven't really got time to go into that in, uh, in too much more detail. Something else that you should be doing right now um, and using LinkedIn as a vehicle is to those of you that have written a book, think about updating it, but also rewriting it for a specific target market. Um, I know one or two of you know me as the, the, the seminar selling guy. I wrote a book called Successful Seminar Selling um, in 2002, 2003, something like that. Um, how to plan, promote, present seminars. Uh, I've uh, last year I've got the rights back to the book. I've brought it right up to date. I've changed the cover. But what I've also done is I've written another version of it aimed at a specific target market successful seminar selling for financial advisors. Um, get ultra focused, ultra niche. Remember, I said earlier about LinkedIn know who you are targeting. Be really, really specific. And so, right now, I'm going at financial advisors, hammer and tongs. So, I've taken an existing book that I've written, I've rewritten it for financial advisors. And this is a screenshot from my, this isn't a show off or anything. This is a show what is possible. This is a screenshot from my Amazon dashboard yesterday. Yesterday alone, I sold 48 copies of successful seminar selling for financial advisors. And look at the other books 
I'm highlighting here, marketing for financial advice professionals, LinkedIn for financial advisors. So if you've got a target market or you have a niche or you have a group of a, 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 a market segment that you've got quite a lot of expertise in, start really focusing on that and using LinkedIn as part of the funnel. So on my LinkedIn profile, I've got these books very, very visible. Um, I also start thinking about creating subscription services. I know this is a little bit off piece, this one. Subscription services uh, has got to be the way forward for speakers, coaches, and consultants. So, so important. Um, so if you've got an existing product, an existing book, existing service, try and come up with a subscription version of it. If you want to learn how to do that, I mean, this, this book here, uh, The Automatic Customer, was an absolute game changer for me. Um, a couple of my online communities, I now charge for membership of this. So you get a sort of reliable, steady stream of income coming in all the time. Okay, something else. Now, I'm conscious we've hit the 90-minute mark. For those of you who would like to stick around, you are very, very welcome to do that. Um, I've got quite a bit more content. It's entirely up to you if you want to stick around. If you want to hop off right now, don't forget, you will get a copy. But I'd love you, those of you that can stick around to stick around for some more bonus content. Um, SlideShare. Now, those of you that aren't familiar with SlideShare, SlideShare is like YouTube for PowerPoint presentations. Um, it's amazing. It's also owned by LinkedIn. Uh, you have a you have a profile on LinkedIn on SlideShare. You upload your presentations. Now, the, the speakers, coaches, and consultants here, those of you that use PowerPoint or any other kind of presentation media, this is just the best tool ever for you guys. You can upload your slides or an edited version, if you like, to SlideShare, and they will automatically appear on LinkedIn as well. Um, but SlideShare is they're getting 80 million uniques a month, which is absolutely fantastic. And one thing that you could do, I haven't got it on anymore, but it's a perfectly uh, va valid strategy, this, is create a PowerPoint presentation that is only intended to be viewed by people who look at your LinkedIn profile. So at one point, I, I'd actually got, I put a, it's not just like a salesy thing, you know, just like people can read your profile, just like people can look at images on your profile or watch videos. Some people like to look at PowerPoints. So create a PowerPoint video, a PowerPoint presentation that sits on your LinkedIn profile that is only intended for viewers. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different things that you could do uh, for SlideShare, your actual presentations, social environmental initiatives, you know, we're only limited by our own imaginations as to how we could use PowerPoint and SlideShare to highlight our knowledge, our experience, our target market, and our expertise. And every now and again, SlideShare sends you some stats. I've got 27 presentations on SlideShare. And the last set of stats, they said they've been viewed 28,000 times. I'll take 28,000 views any day, thank you very much. Uh, LinkedIn Learning. Uh, th this is, a, a, for many people, a hidden feature. Um, it's a premium feature, although last week, due to the coronavirus um, situation, LinkedIn made quite a lot of their, of their learning tools free, particularly around working from home. Um, you can find some mate so if you want to learn something new learn a new skill the resources are sitting there within linkedin learning but there's also the opportunity for you as a speaker or a coach or consultant to have your own videos on there as well uh, the standards the production values need to be quite high so they don't accept absolutely everybody but uh, it's another opportunity for you to get your expertise out there now, I mentioned earlier how important it is to know your numbers. This is absolutely critical, and this is where it all starts together. Monday is the key day of the week. The numbers all kind of reset on a Monday morning. Um, your current stats on LinkedIn are there all the time. They're on your LinkedIn profile. They tend to be updated on Monday. Now, let me throw this little question at you. Would you like to know the names and contact details of everyone who visits your website? Yeah, I think for most of us, we would love to know that. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you that, but I can give you the next best thing. And it's in terms of the stats that are available on your LinkedIn profile. Though the data that LinkedIn gives you is how many people viewed your profile, what they do, where they work, what search term they used, who looked at your profile, and who followed you. One of those is so important it's not true it's the who looked at your profile linkedin is showing you who looked 
at your profile. Just think how important that is. Now, if you're on the free version of LinkedIn, you get to see the last five people, um, and that's fine. If you log in every single day and looked at that, but look at that section, then you'll get a pretty well complete list of who's looking at your profile. If you've got any of the premium versions of LinkedIn, you get to see the last 90 days worth. To me, this is the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn. It's just a screenshot of one particular week. Uh, it showed me that uh, I appeared in 583 searches, and here's just some of the companies uh, that, that looked at me, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, and they show you a nice little graph. This is my graph the 24th of March, and the reason there's a massive great jump there is, uh, I'll show you why that is and how you can get a massive great jump on your LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, yesterday's stats, the, dark, the graph is still going up, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, and sometimes they, they display the stats in a variety of different ways. Um, so I got a little message from LinkedIn. You have shown up in search results 70 times in the last three days. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. I've got my keyword strategy going in the right direction. But what's far, far more important to me is that 12 of them actually looked at my profile. Now, now that I know who's looked at my profile, what do you think would be a good thing to do? Guess what? Say thank you. 99.9% .9 of people never bother to say thank you to people who look at their LinkedIn profile. Now, clearly you're not gonna look, you're not gonna say thank you to absolutely everyone who looks at your profile. But when you start doing this, what you're essentially doing is doing the human thing. I mean, if you imagine you, maybe you run a, uh, a florist in the high street or something like that yeah um, and somebody comes in through the through the shop door the little bell rings they come in and you know you clock them as they walk in they see you you see them and then you go and run and hide out the back how are they going to feel if you if you run away and hide it's the same on LinkedIn remember I said to you earlier people look at your LinkedIn profile on purpose so a cool thing to do is say thank you but when you say thank you magic starts to happen I've had clients of mine tell me the very first time they started saying thank you to people for looking at their profile on LinkedIn or thanking them for an endorsement, they ended up with a piece of business. So to me, this is the single most valuable feature on LinkedIn, but it's one that hardly anybody is proactively using. Why should you say thank you? Well, I had a situation, um, I mean, this happens time and time again. Speaker bureaus, meeting planners, conference organizers, they look at my profile, I write back to them, and I say, thanks for looking at my profile, I hope you found something of interest. In fact, I've got a set of words that I use, and this is what happens. Thanks for the connection, I was viewing your profile as we're looking for speakers for this conference, blah, 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 job done. You've got to start saying thank you to people. Now, not everyone, not every, person who looks at your profile is going to be a speaker booker by any stretch of the imagination but you don't know where a conversation could lead or how you could be recommended so start getting in the habit of saying thank you to people now i'll give you an example this is what i say when somebody wants to connect with me okay i'll read this out hi justin or whatever their name is yes i'm very happy to connect thanks for your interest please let me know if i can introduce you to anyone in my network it's great that you found me on LinkedIn because hundreds of my financial services connections are using my LinkedIn messaging and connection scripts to help find the more the right connections. Financial advisors like you are getting the script here. Please pass on the link to any of your colleagues who may be needing help with LinkedIn right now. Thanks again for your interest, Justin. Okay. Now on the surface of that, that looks a little bit salesy. Um, and it also looks, it's just a message but there's a lot of stuff going on under the surface. First of all, the fact that I actually replied to them at all um, gets me a point, if you like. I've used their name. I've put three dots. Why do you think I should put three dots after their name? Professional copywriters say that when you put three dots after their name, it encourages people to keep listening. So then I use the word yes. Yes is one of the most powerful words in the English language. And I'm saying, yes, I'm happy to connect. So although Justin didn't send me a personalized connection request, I'm replying as if he did. Yes, I'm very happy to connect. Thanks for your interest. Then I do something quite important. I say, please let me know if I can introduce you to anyone in my network. So what I'm there, what I'm doing right there is I'm offering to give him something of potentially very high value. 
hardly anyone ever takes me up on that. But what I'm using is the law of reciprocation. Uh, reciprocation, if you give somebody something, it makes it much more likely they'll give you something back. So I'm giving them something potentially of high value, and that encourages them to keep reading. Then I go on to, it's great that you found me on LinkedIn, because hundreds of my, uh, Justin's a financial advisor, hundreds of my financial connections are using my LinkedIn messaging and connection scripts to help them find more of the right connections and prospects. Now I'm putting right connections and prospects because I know the financial advisor market. They want the right connections and prospects, so I use their language in a message to them. What I'm also using in that paragraph is social proof or nudge theory, as it's known. I'm telling him that other financial advisors like you are getting my messaging and connection scripts, and that then makes it very, very much more likely that he will want to get. And connection scripts, I mean, I've, I've found that so, so powerful. Any of you, could, any of you, whatever you do, whatever your area of expertise is, if you can come up with ready-made scripts that people can use, people view that as a brilliant shortcut, and they absolutely snap them up. Then I actually use the words, financial advisors like you are getting the scripts here. So in their head, they're thinking, well, everyone else is getting it, so I better get it as well. So I'm driving them off LinkedIn, and I'm taking them to a particular funnel. Then I say, please pass on the link to any of your colleagues who may be needing help. Thanks again for your, your interest. And I use his name again and the words regards Phil. So it looks like a, a fairly regular message, but um, I get lots and lots of people replying to that and we get into a conversation as well. Okay, now here's something incredibly powerful um, that, I, that I've kind of alluded to uh, as we go. Using common interests. Now, some of you will recognize the guy on the left. This is Thomas Power. Uh, and he and his wife, Penny, were the founders of the Academy Social Network that I mentioned right at the start. Now, Thomas collects corks. Yep, he's kind of one of those sad people that collects corks. Um, now, when Thomas does networking training, he is a master networker. I mean, he and his wife essentially invented the profile, the social media profile. And one of the things on the Academy was that you used to be able to list out a list of your interests. And Thomas, when he does his network training, lists out his interests. And he's got dog walking, he's got holidays, he puts wine and corks. And whenever he puts corks, there's always a few people in the audience laugh. Um, and he knows they're going to laugh and he always turns around to the audience. And he says, just out of interest, is there anyone else here who collects corks? And he finds that out of an audience of about 50 people, there's always a one, maybe two people who collects corks. And he's also got, he follows Manchester United, I think, and, he, and he's got a few other interests. Uh, and he lists them out. Now, when the coffee break comes, he notices something very interesting happens. He notices that the cork collectors gradually come together and they meet at the coffee machine. The people who like Manchester United come together and they meet at the, at the coffee machine. The people who like walking holidays come together and meet at the coffee machine. Human beings are naturally attracted to other human beings where you've got something in common. So how can you use that on LinkedIn? Now, LinkedIn used to have an interest section as well. So I'm going back to Tina, the financial advisor, but you don't, even though they haven't got this section, you can still do this, okay? Now, um, I said to Tina, what's the biggest issue in your business right now? And she said, finding a financial planner that, that can work with us who um, gets our culture. And I said, pick any word in your list of interests and I will find you someone for you to talk to. So she says, okay, being Greek, I'll choose bazooki. So what we do, and this is using an old version of LinkedIn search engine, I click on the word bazooki. LinkedIn shows me everybody else on LinkedIn who's also got bazooki in their profile. And the algorithm organizes it with her at the top and then the most relevant person immediately underneath. And guess what? It's another financial advisor. Just happens to be in Cyprus, which by pure coincidence is where Tina has born, was born. Now, we've got some interesting things already. They've got several things in common. They're both financial advisors. They both know Cyprus. They both have got bazooki in their LinkedIn profile. Do you think they've got a chance of a conversation leading to, I mean, if she just got in touch with Paul and said, I'm looking for a financial advisor to come and work with us, do you think Paul's going to take any notice? Of course not. She needs to lead in with something they have in common. Now, I've done this myself. 
um, I mentioned I do work in financial services. For me, uh, speaking at the annual sales conferences for a bank or a giant insurance company is a big deal. They pay really well. There's a load of people there. Hopefully I can sell a lot of books. Now, uh, I do a bit of kickboxing. So I'm going to use this technique to find a speaking gig at a bank. So I type the word kickboxing into the search box on LinkedIn. It shows me 50,000 people who've also got kickboxing on their LinkedIn profile. What you tend to find is the first page will be kickboxing instructors. I don't want a kickboxing instructor. I've already got one. He's fairly hardcore. What I want is someone who works in a bank. So then what I do is I hit the filters on the LinkedIn uh, profile and I choose London. Let's make it hard for myself here. Yeah? Let's really narrow it down. I choose London and I choose financial services. LinkedIn redoes the search and there he is. Rui is my way in. Now the chances of Rui being the guy that organizes the annual sales conference are extremely unlikely. That's just not now. All I'm doing is I'm looking for a way in. So I have a look at Rui's profile um, and I read his profile. Turns out he's quite hardcore when it comes to his martial arts, but he's my way in. So what message do you think I should send Rui now? Do you think I should send him this message? Of course not. And everybody says, no, you shouldn't. So why do 99% of people on LinkedIn send that message? It's unbelievable. What I should really send Rui is something a bit more like this. I'm going straight for something that we've got in common. Hi, Rui, spotted you on LinkedIn. Notice we both do martial arts and we're in financial services. We're a rare breed, blah, 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 blah. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to start a conversation and I want that conversation to lead to a coffee shop. And that conversation did lead to a coffee shop and we have our coffee and I'm not gonna to say to him, oh, by the way, uh, Rui, do you, could you introduce me to the person who organizes you? I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wait for him at some point and it will come at some point where he asks me a few questions and I say oh I'm a speaker I do this that and the other and at some point he will offer to introduce me to his head of training to whoever it is and that's exactly what he did this is how you use LinkedIn uh, to get more speaking business find the things that you've got in common with people okay and major on that. You don't go into sales mode, you're trying to create a conversation. This is what you do. I've also done it with yoga as well. I do a bit of yoga. If I type yoga into the LinkedIn search box, I get 657,000 results. First few pages are all yoga teachers. I don't need a yoga teacher, I've already got one. So again, I hit the filters, I choose United Kingdom, I choose events services. What I'm looking for is someone in the events world who does yoga. I redo the search and it finds me 420 people who book speakers who do yoga. Then I send my message and the message is all about yoga. Okay, what sort of yoga you do? How often do you practice? This guy, I'm just trying to create a conversation. I'm not saying, hi Anna, I see you're a freelance event director. I'm a speaker, please book me. It ain't gonna work. We all know that, don't we, yeah? So we, vote, we major on the things we have in common. Now you can do this. The, the LinkedIn search tool is amazing. Um, and play around with this and find what you can do to connect with people. Find common interest in groups. Um, I, I had a quick look through to see what I could find. There are 41,000 groups related to leadership. So those of you who are leadership speakers and coaches, go hang out in groups, okay? Uh, those of you that are into customer service, there are 11,000 groups. Those of you into sales, 35,000 groups on LinkedIn, chain, golf, fishing, whatever your thing, there's a group for it, okay? Whatever your thing, there's a group for it. And what you do is you join these groups and you don't go, hi everybody, I'm a speaker on leadership, I'm sure I can help you. What you do is you go into the group you engage with people at a human level. You say, great post, Sue. I hadn't thought of that before. That's all you do. You just serve. You just add value. What we're trying to do is create curiosity. And you do this enough, people start looking at your profile. This is what happens. Create curiosity so people start looking at your profile. Then you get into the conversation. Then you get into the coffee shop. Yep, you getting this? 
Now, I mentioned that I've got a few scripts and I've got a few things that I, that I use. Uh, there is a tool that I use called Very Fast. It is a Chrome plugin where you can uh, program, for want of a better, pre-written messages for different types of people. So I've got a message. If a financial advisor looks at my profile, I've got a ready-made message um, that is sitting within here that I can then send them, and it customizes it automatically with their name. If I've got suppliers to financial advisors look at my profile, I've got a pre-programmed message. Uh, if I've got someone, uh, anyway, I've got, I've got about eight different pre-programmed messages, and occasionally I just tweak them a little bit more depending on the, on the circumstances. So uh, very fast is free up to a certain point, um, but to me, this is absolutely invaluable. It's a Chrome plugin. When you want to send a message to someone, uh, you just press a button on your keyboard and up come your ready-made messages and you choose one. And it saves having to do co copy and paste all the time. Um, so I've got some connecting scripts. Uh, they're available in my book, LinkedIn Success for Speakers, Coaches and Consultants. Um, another little tool that you might want to use as well is a tool called Crystal Nose. Um, it's <laughs> absolutely astonishing. It's quite one thing sending uh, a ready-made message, but what Crystal Nose does is it uses artificial intelligence and it suggests that you change specific words for specific people um, and uh, you can also plug it into your email as well so if you're sending an email to someone um, it will actually pop up and say oh no don't use that word with this person this person's a detail person or this person wants you to just sort of build a relationship before so it, it actually uses artificial intelligence based on how people use uh, the internet and social media, absolutely extraordinary. It's free up to a certain point, but incredibly powerful. So you can send your ready-made uh, messaging tools, but you can also tweak them using artificial intelligence, using a tool like this so that you really get the right focus, the right message. So what I'm talking about here, and I hope this is coming across loud and clear, is we're talking about personalization is absolutely key. Okay, status updates. Thanks for sticking around with me. I've seen most of you stuck around, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's have a look at how we do status updates. So when we do a status update, you might be forgiven for thinking that everybody's gonna see it. They really are not. The algorithm shows the posts to relevant existing contacts first, and then it gets a score up or down depending on a variety of things. So broadly speaking, if people engage with your post, the score goes up, they show it to a few more people. Uh, if it gets um, a lot of engagement, sometimes a real person actually gives it, gives it a bit of a boost. Um, but sometimes the algorithm works against you as well. So you just got to be careful. So there are certain things you can do that will get your profile views more, more views. Um, some of you know John Young. I saw him posting um, the PSA a group uh, only a couple of days ago. Um, he put a little bit of video as a status update. Um, and let's just break this down. I mean, this was a really, really good status update. So he'd done his shift at the BBC, came back, someone had nicked his bike. Um, so let's break this down. It was attention grabbing. Look, the word gulp right at the top there. Um, it's created curiosity. Um, he used a video. It was very timely because it's uh, highlighted coronavirus. It was very emotional. Somebody nicked his bike after a hard day's work. Yeah, there was a message in there and he used hashtags as well. So that's a really, really good post. Uh, and, and that's the sort of thing that we should be thinking about. Yeah. Tell a short story. Somebody nicked his bike, but there's context to it. It was within the coronavirus uh, situation as well. And it was video. So short stories about your daily life are very effective. Stop doing this. Check out my latest blog stuff. No one's interested. Here's one I did. Um, I was speaking over out in Bulgaria um, and um, I put, this is a status update. An hour ago, I checked the price of parking at Gatwick as I'm speaking in Bulgaria next week, quoted 27 quid. Before booking it, I needed to go to the post office and then get a haircut. I've just sat down to book the parking. And I'm now being quoted 52 pounds. Dope. Hashtag should have booked it earlier. 1200 likes, 227 comments, 23 direct messages. All that is, is a simple story of something that happened in my life. We can all do that really really simple that's how you do status updates yeah uh, again you want to check through people like richard mccann's uh, profile on linkedin uh, he's very good at doing this sort of stuff so uh typical status updates tell stories 
try, I say no images, but try to avoid stories, uh, images if you possibly can. Um, there is evidence that some images actually get penalized, but they do like the mobile. Don't put links in, although there is a way to, to hack it. You could put, if you do want to put a link in, put it in the first comment. Um, that's one way of doing it, but just don't. There's no point, there's, there's no need to put links in status updates. Comment on other people's posts. This is really, really powerful right now. All you gotta do, if you can't think of anything to say yourself, just have a look at what other people have, have said and comment on their stuff. Uh, LinkedIn loves that. Use your hashtags, and if you can, use video as well. Those are the, That's really what you need to be doing. You can also blog and put articles on LinkedIn. Uh, they used to be really, really powerful, but not so much now, um, unless, and these are the rules for articles. They have got to be long, detailed, in-depth, unique, and research-based. So a proper article, okay? None of this short stuff, long, detailed, and with unique insights. Um, so that takes a bit of time, but if you're in a particular market, so those of you that are futurists or something like that, uh, I know, you know, you, you might want to be selling your content instead, but you're the sort of people who, so, so if you have in-depth knowledge on a particular topic, then articles may be for you, but they've got to be really detailed uh, to, to hit hard. If you're going to use images, um, they're really, I know what people get all upset about, and they're saying, oh, LinkedIn's looking more like, like Facebook, fine. Um, guess what? The pictures with the cute animals on LinkedIn are the ones that get the most views. So Max has put first day at work for Magnus, new office dog, look at that. 1700 likes and 227 people got nothing better to do with their time than to comment on it. Max will have got a load of profile views as a result of putting a picture of his dog. Here's another one. Nick here runs a Bentley dealership. You can only use three words to describe your thoughts on this. Lime green Bentley. Look at that. 1,300 people commented on that. So again, you might be thinking, oh, it's not very LinkedIn, but, but get over it. Okay. Uh, start going for the heartstrings. Go and use emotion. Use nostalgia. Use curiosity. Use intrigue. Tell stories. This is what makes the best status updates. This is what drives people to your profile. And here's this one. You may have even seen this one. Uh, Emily, HR manager at Asda, uh, just put a little status update. So we met this gentleman um, in the middle of Leeds. Uh, they had a coffee, cancelled meetings, two hours, blah, blah, blah. 230 likes, 30,000 likes, 11,000 comments. Now I would imagine Asda have got some fairly tight social media rules and, uh, you know, Emily probably broke a few there, but I don't know. Um, the point is she told a heartwarming human story and that's the kind of stuff that people absolutely engage with and they visit your profile as a result. And when they visit your profile, then you go into, you know, human mode, thank them, start a conversation, get them into the coffee shop. Now, this is kind of new on LinkedIn, but incredibly powerful. Do you remember I said right at the start? LinkedIn is trying to reward people for networking rather than broadcasting. So here is a technique, and we're getting towards the end now, that I highly recommend that you do that is ridiculously powerful. And doing this is what resulted in that big jump in my graph I showed you a little bit earlier. Um, doing this really, really works. Now, if you're a financial advisor, for sake of argument, um, what you need to do is go to the search box and you need to type in a keyword but with a hashtag in front of it so hashtag mortgages okay hit the hit the enter button and linkedin will show you 469,000 results and it will show hashtag mortgages and it will invite you to follow that hashtag if you're a financial advisor i would strongly recommend that you then hit the follow button when you hit the follow button what you're doing is you're sending a signal to the linkedin algorithm that mortgages is a topic that you are interested in what you then need to do is you that it, when you hit the follow button, the home screen will change, the home news feed will change, and will show you only content related to mortgages. And then all you need to do is just scroll down and pick out individual posts and say, great post, John, or great post, Sue, thanks for the heads up. And then add in hashtag mortgages, hashtag something else. Um, same, do it with pensions. Type in hashtag pensions, follow the pensions, 
uh, hashtag. Again, you're sending a message that pensions is a word you're interested in, and then just go down the feed and comment on other people's stuff. If you are a leadership speaker, type hashtag leadership, hit the follow button, and then go down the feed and comment on other people's stuff. If you're into customer service, your customer service speaker, do exactly the same thing, okay? And the sort of messages, when I say comment on other people's stuff, it only needs to be as simple as this. Great post, Sue, thanks for the heads up, hashtag mortgages, hashtag liberty, or thanks for your post, Mike, have you read John Smith's book on the subject? Highly recommend, hashtag leadership, hashtag inspiration. So what you're doing is you're piggybacking on other people's content. And by doing that, you are proving to LinkedIn that you are a networker, not a broadcaster. And you are also a networker based around a particular topic, be it mortgages, be it leadership. This is kind of secret source on LinkedIn at the moment. Follow the hashtag, then comment on other people's content. Now, if you do that, comment on three to five posts a day, do that every single day, it will make an immediate improvement in the amount of visibility that you're getting on LinkedIn. I cannot recommend this one highly enough, okay? Follow the hashtag, alert the LinkedIn algorithm to the fact that it's a particular topic that you are interested in, then comment on other people's stuff. And you can see those comments are pretty short, okay? There's, some people say your comment needs to be more than three words. Uh, it may be right, I've not seen anything anywhere that actually says that, but, um, you know, I'm sure we can all manage at least one sentence. Okay, so starting to wrap up. Have a plan, yeah? Back of an envelope job, but have a plan. Be crystal clear about what you want to achieve on LinkedIn. Okay, now for most of us, it's gonna be we want more clients, or we wanna sell more of this, or we wanna sell our course, whatever. But write it down. Be crystal clear about who your primary target market is. Okay, and think about having a value ladder that will tease them in, give them a, a lead magnet for want of a better expression, give them something free, yeah? When we're using LinkedIn, be human, tell stories. If you can do it by video as well, all the better as well, yeah? And what I hope I've got across in this presentation today is that we're not looking at LinkedIn as just some other social networking or social media platform that somebody told us we ought to be used. Think of LinkedIn as an asset of your, of your business and treat it as a strategic asset as well. It's really, really important, more important than ever right now. So be clear about who you're targeting, know them inside out, be clear about what you're offering them, play to the LinkedIn algorithm, start conversations that lead people to your value ladder, yeah? Really important. Your prospects, anyone you'll ever wanna work with are already on LinkedIn. And I repeat this slide from earlier, find out where they are on LinkedIn, what they're talking about, what hashtags they're using, which groups they're in, divert their attention. And diverting their attention can be as simple as saying, great post, Sue, have you thought about this? Just, just get their attention, get them looking at your profile. And your story is on your profile. Or if you can talk to them in a coffee shop, they wanna hear your story. You know, we, we've all seen the great speakers tell stories and you can do that on LinkedIn. You can do it on your profile. You can do it in a video. You can do it in a variety of different ways. But we're just getting their attention so that they can hear your story. And human beings are hardwired to listen to story, to be engaged with stories. And then at some point, you're gonna make them an offer, okay? If you wanna learn more, there's a couple of books just written, just for you. They're available on Amazon. Highly recommend them, of course. So I hope you found this useful today. Thank you so much for sticking around. We've had a couple of hours. I hope you found it, uh, it valuable. If you've enjoyed it, please tell other people that you've enjoyed it. I would really appreciate that. Absolutely superb. If you've got any questions, I've not answered your questions, please just send me an email. More than happy to, uh, to help you out with that. Um, and at some point, we'll make sure that you get a copy of it. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for coming along, and I'll see you another time, and stay safe.